The abundance of motorbikes in Vietnam makes it one of the coolest places to hit the road. However, it's also one of the most dangerous places to drive. The World Health Organization estimates that there are 14,000 traffic fatalities per year in Vietnam. That's about 38 per day. That's why it's so important to know what you're doing when you drive in Vietnam. If you drive the same way you would in the Western world, you may end up skidding across the pavement. I've been driving in Vietnam for two years now. I feel like I've got a pretty good understanding of how things work. If you're a new driver, you'll probably want to take it slow at first. In which case, you're going to want to stay in the far right lane, letting faster traffic pass you on the left. But make sure you leave enough space between yourself and the curb for people driving on the wrong side of the road. People don't like to stop in Vietnam. If someone is turning left on a busy road, instead of waiting for an opening in traffic, they'll often drive along the curb on the wrong side of the road until there's space to get into the proper lane. In Vietnam, you are responsible for what's in front of you. Most people don't check their mirrors or blind spots when making moves on the road. It's very common to see someone pull out of a street, turning right, and not looking to their left at all. Should you check your mirrors and blind spots when driving in Vietnam? I definitely think you should. A quick shoulder check has helped me avoid danger on a couple occasions. Turn indicators in Vietnam should not be trusted. This doesn't mean you shouldn't be using them, but never make a decision based on an assumption that someone is turning in the direction that their signal is indicating. If you really want to get the point across that you are turning, you can use your hand as if you're waving at the direction you want to go. This is how you signal when on a bicycle. It's much more reliable, although I don't normally use it unless I'm trying to get someone to give me space in traffic. Let's take a look at a situation. I want to turn left at this small intersection. There isn't much space for the amount of people coming in and out of the street. In the western world, you'll likely pull up, wait for space, and then take the turn wide. In Vietnam, you're more likely to see someone take it incredibly sharp, like driving on the wrong side of the road sharp. I think it's safest to get over as much as you can, then take it in the middle of the road, allowing space for traffic on both the right and the left. This isn't always the best, but at least it gives you space on either side to dodge traffic. When you're driving on a four-lane road, you'll notice most of the bikes stay in the right lane. The left lane is reserved for cars. As you get more comfortable on the bike, you'll use the car lane to get around people a bit more. This is actually illegal, but very common and relatively safe if you're checking to make sure no cars are coming. But you should also be aware that cars coming from the opposite direction will use that lane, rather than their own bike lane, to pass other cars. In Vietnam, the larger the vehicle is, the more respect you have to give it. Roundabouts in Vietnam are a bit of a mystery. There doesn't seem to be any rules about who gets the right of way. If you're a beginner, I recommend waiting for another driver, or even better, a group of drivers, and using them as protection. Generally, you go when you can, and you stop when it's dangerous. Sometimes this means stopping before you enter, sometimes it means stopping while in the roundabout. Intersections with traffic lights are a bit easier to handle, but you should never trust that someone won't drive right through a red light. If you're at a three-way intersection and on a motorbike, you can drive through a red light if you're going straight. It's also often legal to turn left on a red light at a three-way intersection. Since traffic can only be coming from one way, it's easy to see an opening. At a normal four-way intersection, turning left can sometimes be tricky. Some motorcyclists will turn from the motorbike lane. Some will even do it from the far right lane, cutting across all the people who are going straight. I would recommend going into the car lane and getting as close to the front as possible. Unlike most countries, people turning left generally go before people going straight. This isn't always possible and you might find yourself feeling like a sitting duck in the middle of an intersection waiting for a chance to turn, but if you can go as soon as the light turns green I recommend doing it. And at an angle, not a 90 degree turn. Just be aware of people coming through the light late. Motorbikes but not cars can turn right on all red lights. You don't even have to stop first. Probably the most dangerous things on the road are taxi drivers, bus drivers, and truck drivers. Young men, often with no helmet, are usually the most erratic motorbike drivers, especially when they have someone on the back to show off to. Also beware of multiple people on a bicycle. Getting your momentum going while riding a bicycle with two people on it can lead to a bit of a veer into other lanes. The most important thing I can tell you is to pay attention at all times. You never know when some idiot will cut into traffic or a giant metal pole will swing towards you. This was the hardest thing for me to get used to, especially when Vietnam was still a new country to me. There are so many cool things happening everywhere. I see things daily that deserve a double look. But in order to stay safe, you need to be focused on the road. I hope this video helps you conquer the roads of Vietnam. When you're comfortable on the bike, I recommend taking a bike trip up to Da Lat. We had an amazing 10 day trip that we'll never forget. Vietnam is a beautiful country that is best enjoyed on two wheels. 